All right, we're live. Welcome to my live stream. I am probably covered up by the live uh, icon, which is awesome. Um, so let me let me pull pull back the full cam. Okay, so uh, if you're just tuning in, you're on my live stream. Um, I'm gonna do my pitches a little later, I think, because uh, I'm kind of liking that idea. Um, but I do want to give a little explanation to what this is. Basically, I'm working on a book about the Brownings, Elizabeth Barrett Browning and um, Robert Browning, the poets, the Victorian era poets, uh, called Not Death But Love. And I'm working on right now uh, finalizing the uh, pencils for like page one. And then I'm hanging out with my buddies who are joining me uh, from as an overlap from the art casters because we're all crazy artists who work on crazy projects. So the stream will probably go like for me, I'm going to try to kind of cut it around like two um, and Gary and Gary Hodges and Corey are kind of hanging out and uh, working on their projects. And we're just going to chat and kind of hang out as we're doing it. Um, and yeah, like that's, that's basically it. So anyhow, we were just chatting like off air for a little bit. Um, yeah. So Corey was saying something about faith and then I was going to mention something about that i don't want it to become a debate so we won't debate um but i was just Famous saying like, last words i can't no, wait no. to watch you guys debate you can quote time. me on it no we're not going to debate um i like i one of my pet my personal pet peeves when it comes to like faith discussions is like people kind of forget the the, the actual definition of the word faith so and by the way we were talking about like faith <laughs> um a little bit so like for me, um, faith doesn't necessarily equate to blind faith. Like um, uh, you could have faith in the judicial process, right? Um, that doesn't necessarily mean you have blind faith in the judicial process. It might mean like you've observed the justice system work. I'm, by the way, I don't know if everyone's going to have that, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> you might have a, you might have lost faith in the justice system, right? Like maybe you saw the justice system be corrupt or something like that, and then you lose faith. But it's like I, there's certain kinds of faith, like um, like faith in your wife or faith in like, you know, a friend or something like that. That can be like a very earned, very rational approach to things. That doesn't necessarily have to mean like a blind. Um, acceptance of like a, like kind of a, a jump into the void, you know, um, and that's all I was gonna say about the faith thing is like for me it's like one of the things that bugs me a bit with um, conversations about faith is if I say I have faith or something, someone might make the assumption that I'm just sort of making a a jump without like a leap without any sort of induction or deduction involved, you know. I don't know if that makes sense. So that was that was all. <laughs> yeah, but I wasn't saying that. I'm saying at some point, everything, including religion and everything else, uh, requires you to have some kind of blind faith. Hmm. Huh. Like I, even, I would even, agree that there's probably like a last leg. Yeah, like even like on you the can atomic... reason and think and study, but there's yeah. going to be this last distance that you'll have to traverse with. Right. Yeah. Even on, even on like the atomic level, right? If I were one of the scientists that was looking at that, yeah, I would even I would have to say, I believe that a proton is there, even though I can't see it. Yeah. Because of all of the evidence, but all of that evidence leads me to that last little bit where I have to say, you know. Like, I can't prove everything. Yes, I agree with that. Um, that's, all, that's all I was saying. Yeah, I. the only thing I I was chiming in on is just like, yeah, I mean, I agree with you on that 100%. So I think we're in agreement. But it's just like, I just don't like when people equate it to like what is commonly viewed as like blind faith, which is like, I believe that, you know, I can fly or something. And it's like, even if like all the signs are pointing to the fact that like you can't fly, like, you know what I mean? Right. It's like that kind of idea of belief. Like to me, I, I, um, that's the one that like is always like, you know, and I may, you know, Corey, I didn't think we were going to disagree about it. That's why I was like thinking we, we should talk about it, you know, on air. Yeah. Um, but it's like, yeah, I feel like that, that kind of faith can be like really dangerous, you know, like the, the, ultra blind faith you know where it's like yeah. 
I don't know, like a politician goes on air and is like, you should trust me. And it's like, well, why should we trust you? What's your track record? That kind of just trust me because I'm on your team and you should trust me. And you're like, because the you know other guy's I mean? terrible. Yeah. Yeah. That's where like, I think like sometimes where you're like, well, I'm just going to believe that like that can be really dangerous. you know? Right. And, and on the, on the flip side, which is also, it's all a risk, right? Is yeah. I could have a track record with somebody that I've known for years and I can fully expect and trust that they are going to behave a certain way, but that doesn't make it happen. You know what I mean? Like it's, I still could, I still could not have calculated a variable or, or been unaware of some, something or whatever. Yeah. DD Williams is saying, I know it's West coast time for you guys, but when do you sleep? <laughs> Welcome DD. <Didi. laughs> uh, we're creatives. We never sleep. Um, uh, I think two is the answer for Josh. Yeah, that's, that's my answer. I, I will tell you, like, um, I did a stream a couple days ago where I got really into the process and basically I did my heart out at two. Um, and then afterwards I was like, Oh, I'll just finalize. So I did this, uh, you see that top panel I, I decided to kind of, Oh wait, Oh my gosh. I just realized I'm not sharing my streamer fail. You guys. Um, there we go. So this Keith, top panel, <laughs> Keith Harper says Canada, however, total BS doesn't exist. <laughs> that's true that's true Pro prove to me it exists really i mean yeah. you guys um who told yeah. you it exists you trust exactly. that person? yeah shouldn't trust those those authorities um anyhow like what are borders anyway man um <laughs> um is a concept man yeah um but uh but anyhow so like i was doing this the finalized panel and then i looked at the clock and it was like five right and then i had to go to work in like an hour and i went through oh. my work day and of course that was like one of those heavy art director days where it's like somebody's in there like what should i do with this and then like another department's like oh we gotta work on this and it was just chaos yeah. and i was like i i got through it and i did okay but i was like i not again so yeah, at a certain, at a certain point, there's a, yeah, there's a, couple. yeah, there's like, so it was, it was more the drive home where I was like, uh, I'm lucky if I get home without falling asleep in the car, that's where I'm like, okay, yeah, the two o'clock thing, um, back to the faith thing, I guess, like I have faith in my wife's, uh, judgment of me and that's the time she's told me I should do. And she's correct. Anytime I've second guessed that I've been proven wrong. So <laughs> Uh, let's see here. We got a lot of people in the chat all of a sudden. Yeah. Frank is in the chat. Keith is in the chat. DD. I love it. Like, I, it's one of the things I love about these streams. And Gary will be seeing this on Saturday when he streams and has his live stream. That's right. Um, but it's like I, one of the fun things about the stream is like, I think because I'm doing this a lot, uh, like people, people show up and hang out. And it's awesome. Yeah. We all work on art together. Um, I got to, I got to tell you about this whole faith belief thing. Yes. Um, have you read, uh, uh, department of truth yet? I, I want to, I have a physical copy. If we were closer, I'd just give it to you, but this is that comic, right? Yeah. It's such a fun concept. It's, it's like Lee Harvey Oswald is running this, uh, secret government agency, that is trying to control the narrative because the basically the the zeitgeist becomes the reality so whatever most people believe the reality conforms to that and so if enough people start believing that the earth is flat then the oh, earth that is, is actually flat, flat. Wow. and so that they they'll go to these conferences so there's like two forces there's one group that is like trying to alter reality and then there's another group that's trying to keep it that way keep it the same Interesting. and and it's it's a fun it's just a fun idea yeah that is it, that sounds fun sounds super fun man um i'm Someone like told me about it i tried to go and find a copy and it was like sold out at the time so like i need to reattend. i don't know about the 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 current issues because i saw some in a comic book store and it was just walls of text and there yeah. were like almost no images. And I'm like, oh no, the writer 
kind of spun out of control. Like it was, it was like, it wasn't like one page of text. It was like three or four pages in a row of just like text with like kind of colored backgrounds. And I was like, it's not a comic anymore, but like the first, the first trade paperback was, it was fun. It was a fun one. It sounds rad. Um, I, here's the downside is like my reading time is going to be non-existent. I don't know, oh, Gary, yeah. like, do you have that too? Cause you're kind of in crunch time too. Yeah. It's I'm, I have to admit like uh, right now, any of my time when I have it, which is not much, it's probably going to Elden Ring. It's not going to uh, a lot. I'm not doing a lot of reading. I'm not doing a lot of anything though. I am right now working through, uh, Reccia's illustrated uh, Life of Che, which is a Fantagraphics thing right here. Huh. I just love his ink work. I don't know if you can see some of this. Oh, that looks amazing. Dude, I'm going to have to check that out. It's I am, great. I'm like knee deep in Paul's stuff, Paul Pate's books. Oh, yeah. that I still I have uh, the showed up in from Amazon, right? Yeah. Here. It's a lot I'm of reading, fun. I'm reading Black Label Wonder Woman right now. It's pretty cool. What is Black Label Wonder Woman? Uh, is that like the the behind the shelf version of Wonder yes, Woman? Yes. Yeah. Right. You gotta ask for it, and they go in the yeah. back and get it for you. Um, no, it's a. Uh, it's just like I don't know what Black Label is because this is the only Black Label one that I'm reading. But I guess DC is doing this whole Black Label thing. Huh. Like um, a whiskey or something. Yeah. No, it's just, it's, this one is, she wakes up and it's basically Wonder Woman wakes up in the post-apocalyptic future and begins fighting giant kaiju that have kind of like taken over the earth because of a nuclear fallout. That's fun. That sounds and, awesome. Yeah. And like, so she goes and tries to recruit Superman and he's dead. Batman's dead and everybody's dead. Like the whole Justice League is dead and She's the only one left. Anyway, it's sounds it's fun. fun. Yeah, dude, I need to. Um, I here's what I'm thinking: when I'm done with this book and with uh, two stories, book two, I'm gonna take like a good year off and just be like an oil painter and uh, read a bunch of stuff and play Elden Ring. How about that? There you go. Okay, Although so, I hear, I feel like from what I've heard about Elden Ring, I think that would just turn into me just playing Elden Ring for, for a year. <laughs> Elden Ring just leads to more Elden Ring. It's a little, yeah, it's a little rough. I actually think I, I believe for anyone who may have played it and is watching, wait, are you saying you have faith? I have faith. <laughs> I my impression is that I've got to be close to the end of the game. And I'm kind of like dying for it to be so I can just break the spell and be like, all right, that's it. There we go. I got it out of my system. I'm done. Oh, I was under the impression that it was like an open world where you're playing against other people. No, it's it's like it's more like a uh, you can play against other people. I don't really mess with that. Um, I it's more like open world, like Skyrim or something like that. Where oh, okay. Right. You have this sandbox fantasy world to explore. And, um, there's a lot in there. It's very deep. It's very, there's like a fun kind of mythology buried in it. It's, it's, uh, it's a really cool game, but I just don't have the time, you know? Yeah. Right? So, it's but that's I'm like, that's got to be like a huge part of of like your personality too because you used to like professionally review games, you know? Yeah. So yeah. it's like the appreciation for like a good game must be pretty pretty strong. Oh yeah. That. No, and, and if I wasn't drawing a comic right now, like whatever however much time I've poured into it it would be four times as much. <laughs> you know, I'd be all about it right now and I'd be yeah, that would be all I'd want to do, but yeah, I just can't. Oh, Jake, Jake was asking if we're talking Wonder Woman Dead Earth, and yes, that's the one I was talking about, Jake. Uh, Dee Dee is saying she's reading The History of Scotland. Oh, that sounds amazing. Two art books by James Gurney. Okay, so Dee Dee, when you're reading The History of Scotland, if you come upon, like, the Corey Kerr chapter, let us know. <laughs> the, the Kerrs were 
cutthroats and mercenaries on the border. Sometimes they fought for the English and sometimes they fought for the Scottish. They were whoever, right? paid, whoever paid the most. Yeah. So my wife is like from like a, like one side of her family is like power Scottish, you know, cause she's a Stuart. So it's like, that's a, that's a powerful clan. Wow. <laughs> I'm just saying. My, my uh, mom's side is the Ross the, uh, the the Ross clan, nice. Which I guess was a little bit of a player over there. Um, there's one one of the Rosses in the family tree we found on Ancestry. Um, we wish we had more to this story, but apparently he was burned at the stake by Native Americans in like. 1700s or something and it, that it's just the thing it's like that i that begs you know like come on like why what happened what was going on yeah there's no definitely a lot of it's just that they for some reason burned him at the stake i think you need to do a historical graphic novel about it and just do it, tons of research I, on stream it sounds intriguing <laughs> i mean so gary uh i'm just dipping into this historical graphic novel business and I got to say, it's intriguing. I I think my semi-autistic brain is like really intrigued by it and, and likes it. Yes. Um, but it's also very overwhelming and it's hard to know where to have the rabbit hole stop. Yes. Um, so far. And I'm only like maybe four pages roughed into it. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is nuts. Yeah, I don't know. So how do you find that balance of like where to pull the trigger? Like where to say like that's enough? Yeah. Um, boy, that's a good question. I think you get better and better at getting a feel for... Unfortunately, I learned this through trial and error. You do a ton of research and you realize how much of it just gets left in a folder somewhere and you don't actually need. There's, yeah, you just get a better feel for like this is the amount that will actually be apparent from the drawing, and this is stuff I don't really need to know. Yeah, um, but, yeah. There, there's no way to visually convey this, and it doesn't really matter. Um, I mostly just like you, just from the sound of it, when I'm listening to your your streams, part of your approach is trying to avoid obvious, embarrassing errors. Yeah, you know, so it's like you're just trying to make sure, and I think you get better at that too. You start looking at scenes and you start thinking about like what would not exist at that time. Yeah. Therefore, what do I not draw? You know, in in this scene. Yeah, uh, like I I've been just basically to bypass that like for Victorian stuff. I've just been adding a mustache and a monocle to like everything. <laughs> You're right, right. The boats, everything. Yeah. Just all of it. Monocles on everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, I think... As everyone knows, you know. I, it, I think it, you know, what helps me most is having a very clear idea of what I'm showing in a panel. Yeah. Because, like, if, if I if I didn't know... If I if this was a movie, if D versus M 1979 was a movie, I'm looking at this finished page that I printed out right in front of me right now, and I didn't know where I wanted to point the camera the day of shooting... Like then you'd have to build up everything. Like the outlets in the wall would have to be 1979 appropriate. Like what yeah. kind of doorknobs were we talking about? What kind of coffee cups? Like, I mean, you'd really have to go down. But since I'm curious, like I'm, if I have a real clear idea of what each panel is going to be, yeah, that helps me focus. It helps yep. me realize like, I don't need to know, you know, what door hinges looked like in 1979. <laughs> like yeah. I, I can, cause I'm not, I'm just not going to show it. I'm just I, well, like, I don't know. So I'm not going to show it. I yeah. don't know exactly what this phone jack looks like in that era. So I'm just going to make a choice not to show it. But then there are some things that I know there's no getting around that will absolutely be front and center. And that's the stuff you go hard on. Yeah. And that's the stuff in my case, you won't be able to do this. But 79 is recent enough where on eBay, like if I can find a cheap old phone, I'll just yeah. buy it. If I can find, a, you know, like some vintage clothes, I'll just buy them. You yep. know, like it's amazing what you can find. And then it's like, well, now I know exactly what it looks like. I have it here as still life, you know, and I can make sure it's right. But it's a really good call. 
Yeah, I think if you're working in a time frame where there's, you know, it's recent enough, like that's that's always ideal. Right. You know, even like, it, you know, if, if time permitted, I mean, it'd be fun to like just do that with like Victorian era stuff too. That that would be possible, you know. Yeah. Um, a lot of illustrators in the olden days used to, you know, have like people literally just pose like live while they painted them. Sure. You know, with well, like a Victorian costume on or something. I bet there's, I mean, if, you know, I bet there's a thousand of those, you know, uh, when you go to Barnes and Noble, they yes. have those coffee table books that are like five bucks or 10 yeah. bucks. I bet there's 8 million Victorian related books like that. Oh yeah. Oh, you yeah. Build a resource library that would get you through almost anything. Yep, I bet there true. are museum exhibits in your town, you know, or oh, yeah. nearby, you know, like there's, so there's a lot of available resources. So. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, also that like, there's a million like Jane Austen movies and, you know, right. films from that era too, where you can kind of take advantage of some of the groundwork that other yeah. people have built. That was something I, I think I mentioned in one of your streams and, and I've used that for a couple of the D versus M's. Yeah. You, you just trust that. And again, trust like, but you trust that, especially if it's a big production, like for example, I needed to know like what certain kinds of military uniforms looked like in 1979. And that's weirdly difficult to research. So I found like the easy back door to that is like, okay, what's a movie set in 1979 where you see soldiers, you know, and, and like or ideally shot even in 1979. And is it a big enough production where you can reasonably expect they paid somebody good money to get yeah. these details right? I'm just going to crib off their worksheet, you know, yep. like, and that's why, like, I think Super 8, that J.J. Abrams movie. Yeah is set in the late 70s there are soldiers in it i'm assuming jj abrams and his production company probably figured out what uniforms would be in the late 70s i'll just go by that like <laughs> like it's like good enough you know and if i'm wrong well so is jj abrams and i can live with that but so one of the things that gave me a little encouragement was i was starting to feel like i don't know if i'm doing adequate research on these things and i hit a point where i wanted to see what the inside of um of a uh, 50 and now i'm blanking out on the street wimple um yeah 50 wimple street um what the interior would look like so i ended up watching the um the browning or the barretts of wimple street the movie and after watching that movie i felt so good about my research because it's so off and yeah. so inaccurate and so like dated and so from its time that i was like well i'm not gonna do worse than that <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. No, but it was totally. one of those things where I got like some resources from it, but mostly I was just like reassured that like, yeah, I guess I'll do okay. You know? Yeah, I'll be fine. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. because at least I'll make a better effort. You know, I don't know. Because even in that movie, I mean, it's an old you know film, but it's funny because they have like you know like a 1940s door or something, and it's like, well, yeah, I, I'll be okay. You know. It's funny. See, my trick is uh, everything is just either in the future or an alternate history. So if, if, if it's the butterfly effect, if one thing has changed, who's to say that that doesn't change, you know, the cravats that people were wearing in the 1700s, you know, or whatever. Yeah. In my world, in my world, maybe they do. <laughs> it's, it's the biggest cheat ever. Well, and that's inevitably awesome. you're going to get it wrong too. That's, yeah, that's kind of one right. of the joys. I, you know, it's good that we started this with faith. Cause I think that's the act of faith you do as an artist where it's like, you kind of go forward just knowing you can screw up. That's okay. Like, yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, I was having that problem with roughs for a little bit, like, cause I've, I've been working on finalized pages for so long um on the two stories thing that it took me a few pages to just get into the thumbnail zone where you can be you can screw up like you don't have to like like do that with your line right um you can confidently just do a line um it's an interesting act of faith like doing art you know right yeah so you just kind of have to trust the process and also not really freak out about the failure or the possibility of failure you know right rambling no, that I well, and 
back to the original question, I think I also, if when I'm trying to decide where to spend my time, I do think a little bit about where are the enthusiasts, like where's the fan community? So like, if I'm gonna be drawing a car, I know there are car people. And I right. know there are people who, if I get the car wrong, like that's, not only are there people out there who are gonna notice that, it's gonna check them out. Like, you know, they're gonna be distracted by like this incorrect car. <laughs> So I think sometimes you can just get a sense of like, like for the military uniforms, it's like there's someone out, I don't really care about that stuff, but I bet there's people who do. And right. there's somebody so out there, right there's back. somebody out there cosplaying as that era of military. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, that makes perfect sense because it's, you know, what's funny. Um, I've actually, so in the NCS, there was a cartoonist who, is also a um, archery instructor. And like, so his day job, like he does like comics, like Marvel comics and stuff like that. And then he'll like teach archery. It's kind of a cool little side gig, I guess. But the fact that he's an actual archer and he's like done it professionally, it's like he would watch um, Green Arrow. Just like hate watch it. Yeah. He's just like, that is not how you pull like a compound bro. Like you would not do that. Like he's, and I guess like he's been hired on things like that as a consultant because of the fact that like people just get it wrong, you know, or they'll just, yeah. I, so I thought about him when, um, when the recent one came out, uh, what is it? Um, Hawkeye. Yeah. Hawkeye, which was really great, but yeah, it was fun. I enjoyed it. I don't know if he could enjoy it. Like I'd be curious right. if he enjoyed that movie because when you know it's like artists like you know all the art scenes in yeah. movies that they just great on me like where you're like watching somebody fake like they're drawing and it's just so transparent oh yeah well it's like yeah. when i watch well when i watch first of all when i watch any kind of like crime scene investigation thing like right. it, it just drives yeah. me crazy when i watch anybody playing video games in a movie <laughs> It's just like it it just makes me nuts. Like I, I I can't and my girlfriend, she's a classical musician. Anytime she's watching someone play an instrument. I know? never thought of that because there's like, you know, I bet a lot of people feel like they could really fake like violin or something, you know. Yeah, and you like can, it's and less specific can, than a guitar chord, you know. She can spot immediately like they're not really playing, you know, and right. like and that's kind of the stuff like, you're sort of thinking about that when you're doing, at least I am when I'm yeah. doing like a D versus M. So I'm thinking about like, I, like I was getting, you know, some of that stuff you try to get specific, like the men in black and the first one, it's like, how would they hold their guns in that era? Like, I know how a cop holds his gun today, but how, right. like, how were they being trained then? Like, because I know, mm -hmm. I know that stuff a little bit, but I know there's again, someone out there who really knows that and they're going to check out, especially if, the whole pr mine is also Josh. You're gonna have the same problem too because it's historical. I I paint myself into a little bit of a corner because the whole angle is this is a true story, mm -hmm. you know, and right. it's this historical. This really happened, so I can't be loose about the details. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like I'm like the whole gimmick is like no, no, no. This happened. You know? Yeah. What gimmick? I don't know what you're talking about. Right. <laughs> DVSM is right. it's 100 percent true. Historical fiction. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh man, this is a uh yeah, it's it's an interesting endeavor, but I'm I'm enjoying it and I can see the appeal. I think um like I honestly I'm just kind of I'm definitely glad it's a collaborative effort because it would be such a mad undertaking to try to write and draw this. Oh um, God. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like, um, the next, although if I ever do a historical fiction again, I don't know, there's too many things, man. There's too <laughs> many, too many interesting roads to go down in comics. That's, that's something I am trying to figure out right now. Yeah, is the next thing that I'm going to do the next hill. Well, because I just I just wrapped or I well, sorry, I'm about to shoot the live action portion of the um, the live action portion of the thing that I just finished uh, animating. 
and uh, I'm not exactly sure what I want to do next. I was even thinking of jumping back into comics. Um, anyway, it's kind of interesting. I just I don't well, know where to go next because it's like I mean, clearly I comics, do, right? I mean, Gary, what would you think? I would. Think I could. Like, I could do you, anything. Yeah. You know what I mean. I would think you should definitely do like a very long graphic novel. I think Gary's in agreement too, right? What do you 100%, think? One hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. no, you guys, you guys are a lot of help. I appreciate that. Thank mm -hmm. you. I think maybe like a um, like a five hundred pager. I did sixty pages. That's the longest. The longest I've done. I think I think you should do another short story. Like in all seriousness. Why not do another short story in your um, your seafaring trilogy? You know, I, I'm I'm discovering a problem that I have. Um, I get bored of stuff that I leave on the shelf for later. I, I I might have lost the energy for that story. Yeah, I don't know. You might have lost that love and feeling. Mm -hmm. Yep, that happens. Yeah, I think I heard a song about it. Yeah. There was one sometime, some, some era. Yeah. I felt like that would be cool if that was from the seventies, but it wasn't, it, it would have been cool if it was a song specifically from the era of your comic, Gary. I have a, I, I don't want to reveal it yet. I think I told Jim about it, um, but there, I found a period appropriate song that I want to use in the trailer for when this gets close to release that I, I love so much. It's so perfect. And I was, I was so excited to find it that I was like, I wish I could just cut a trailer now, you know, like a year before it's out. Um, but no, I gotta wait. But. I'm kind of excited about this trailer business. I know. So, I don't know, like, so how you're knocking out pages, then, Gary? You're not like, yeah, there. I mean, finished some. Oh point. yeah, yeah. I've got a little bit of a pile. Nice. I'm uh, I'm. It's not too far, but I'm finishing right now. I'm finishing page eight as we speak. I'm going to finish it before I go to bed. I think that's doable. And then, um, yeah. You know, about a page a week, sometimes a little bit faster. I have not gone slower, so that's that's good. Oh, that's good. Nice. I am aiming to get this finished tonight, too, because there was no way in hell I was going to do uh, thumbnails that require a bunch of research whilst doing art art casters. I think that would be impossible. Yeah, that's... Well, and I, we, we've talked about this. Like, I... I can do some kinds of things while I'm talking to people. The only reason I can do this right now, drawing and talking, is this is the last stage of a page. The la the thing I say for last is mm -hmm. like where I'm going in with the stylus and doing all these little like hair highlights and like there's a character in this who's got kind of hairy arms and hands, so like the hair and like just little d touches and details and highlight. Like it's I can kind of yeah. just move through and do it real fast. But like when I'm actually like working out shapes and people like i gotta focus yeah yeah understandably uh dd said excuse me while i step behind gary to check out his books <laughs> and she's impressed by your uh bookshelf my, my library my wall of books that's awesome i have a wall of books and it's in my other room i recently um, was i recently started to go through these and and kind of filter out what I'm going to donate. But uh, yeah, I've got I've run out of shelf space, so I might have a yeah. one in one in one out situation. This is I, my uh, like anti Marie Kondo right. thing. Is like the second you were like, I have to figure out which books to get rid of. I had this visceral reaction of horror in my stomach yeah. <laughs> of like the idea of get, like get rid of books. Well, haven't you haven't you purchased a book? Um, and then, yeah, you don't like it. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that I've that. got, I've got books where I'm like, I that was a dumb book. I, I don't like it, and I don't think I'm going to read it again. I understand. It's okay. Return two stories. I get it. <laughs> 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 Wouldn't that be funny if like 
yeah. don't know. We we should develop a character that just takes everything personally. We're like, Debbie man, Downer, I'm really struggling with my uh, with my drawings today, and it's like, yeah, okay, fine. Just hint that I'm struggling at drawing. I get it. I get it. <laughs> it's like we weren't we weren't talking about. You. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's funny. I went through. I just went through that moving because, like, the worst thing in the world for moving is books. Oh, so goodness. yeah, I went through and figured out everything I could donate before, but all of this, like this, obviously made the cut. And plus, I have been. Um, in the front room, there's some built-in bookshelves, and those are filled too. So, so I have a problem. with uh, yeah, like the moving. I think we talked about this because you're a fan of physical books as well, right? Yes. Yeah. And I was saying that's the most compelling argument I've heard for digital books. Where the the best argument I heard for the case for that was moving. The second yeah. somebody said moving, I think it was um. It might have been Guy Hassan. I yeah. think. I now I might be wrong, but I anyway, mean, it's a strong someone argument. on an interview had brought that up, and I was like, "That is literally the best, strongest argument I've heard yeah. for digital books." Moving. But I, uh, like on the Making Comics <laughs> podcast, they they they, were, they weren't making fun of me, but they thought it was sort of funny my hard position where. We were talking about digital comics and uh, so I, I think we're talking about Kickstarters and everything and how, you know, how to build a Kickstarter. And I, I forgot how we got on it, but this idea of like, sometimes you'll back a physical book and you get the digital too. And I was telling him like, I have no problem saying like that shit goes right in the trash. Like I, I I'm like, if I have the digital and the, if, if the comic only exists digitally, okay, I'll read it digitally. But if I have a choice, it's physical all the way, 100%, yeah. you know? And and they were like, okay, that, that's how you feel. You prefer physical. But would you offer D versus M as digital? I said, absolutely not. <laughs> because I'm a physical snob. Like, it's like, no, I'm sorry. Like, this is, I, I likened it to like, look, you're coming over to my house for dinner. I'm making you food the way I want to make it. I'm not making what you want me to make. I'm making what I want to make. Like I'm entertaining you. If you don't want it, you don't have to have it. But like, no, I'm not. I'm not doing digital comics with you versus that. But you, don't you want to accommodate the people that would like to experience your book? No. While they're, while they're no. <laughs> I love that answer. And that's and that's what they thought was so funny. It's like, no, I feel no need, no need to do that. I mean, but I, I would also like, empathize. I would like to really. poop and think of Gary. That's you what? I want to poop and think of Gary. That's kind of <laughs> want those two experiences. To you can inside. sit on the can with a physical book. There's nothing to prevent you from doing that. This is true. This I've got to go true. find it though. Like I've got to be like, Oh, I'm, I'm going there. You know, I think, uh, I don't know. I, I think I'm willing to lose that sale. I wait, think wait you got oh, an yeah. amen. You got an amen there, Gary. Right. From who? Uh, from DD. There you go. All right. Yeah. See? No, I, I, I like I like I like physical books, but I have recently I'll tell you something else that I like. I like action figures. And in both instances, I have recently looked at my studio in disgust and been like, I I gotta get rid of some of this crap. Like I I just I don't know. There's something about it where I'm just I I was just like sick. I think part of it is like I was like homebound for months and kind of like on oxygen and whatever. I was like trapped in this space. And I felt like all of this stuff was just so it's everywhere and oppressive. And I was just like, I got to get out. And so I, I kind of started getting to the point where I was like, I'm never going to be a minimalist. That's just, I, it's impossible. But, um, but I could see how somebody could get to that point. I had that kind of thought. And I also am like by admission, one of those people who has on multiple occasions almost pulled the trigger of like just saying peace out to society and living off the grid. So you're basically like one, like if you guys ever see Corey disappear, he just went straight like Ralph Waldo Emerson. I, I a, or sorry, that. Thoreau, I guess. Yeah, I've toyed with I've toyed with Walden's Pond many times. 
Nice, nice. Just and, don't and shave. It, that was a deep I, cut. You know how? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Throw no, but I, yeah, I, I've had that, of... I've had that temptation <laughs> so much where I'm just like, you know what? I don't need this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I don't, I don't know if that's me or if that's just like every thirty-year-old male at some point is just like, you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna like I, I remember I graduated college and my initial thought was I, I think I'm gonna live on a boat. I'm just gonna buy a boat, I'll row in, I'll row into town, I'll be that weird guy that like nobody quite understands or knows what's going on. And I will just row into town when I need supplies and then I just won't ever talk to anybody. I'm just gonna be that dude. In, in society that's my goal now yeah. i love it i and think so that's... i i get the idea i guess that's a long way of saying i get the idea of digital when i get into that mood where i'm like i don't uh, i don't need this i'm the opposite because i get like i i get like these fantasy very similar things but they're like different fantasies where i'm like one day i'm gonna find the one place that has like a low cost of living um and has enlightened people living there um and uh and it's like such a low cost of living that i can get just like a massive amount of property and just hole up and make comics and read books and just go nuts like lose oh, my mind I like a imagine. like a mad creator like a jd salinger type person who's just like out in the middle of nowhere eating uh strange foods and like telling the press to get away from me because i'm like super famous of course in of course, this fantasy right. of course yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, my, my issue with that is I don't, I, property just means work. Like I don't want, yeah, like, I don't I, know about the, pro yeah. that's the thing in my fantasy, this property just takes care of itself. <laughs> right. Um, or I have the budget to like, even though I'm a recluse, like I can still hire people to just do everything for me. Yeah. Um, I like that idea. <clears throat> Gary, what's your wild author fantasy? Like, do you want to? disappear into the wilderness um do you want to get rid of all things or do you want to like become like the recluse or just like be a healthy happy individual uh, <laughs> or do you want to be weird and be like a productive member of society yeah right? like you know um you know i <laughs> i think I think I've, I've been through periods of my life where I liked the idea of being sort of like the Unabomber out and yeah, just, <laughs> like, just totally off the grid and out there. And I, yeah. I think I, maybe it's just age or I don't know what, like I just, yeah. I realized like that I, that's not really for me and I wouldn't really be happy doing it. Even though I still find some of that, not being the Unabomber, but the idea of being off the grid is very romantic to me. Like yeah. as an idea, I just know that that's like, I'm not, yeah, me Here, too. To do that. I think for me, the sweet spot would be the smallest town that I can live in with pretty country, but that's still large enough to have a lot of basic modern yeah. uh, amenities. You know, like, I mean, is there, is like the postal service reliable <laughs> wherever this place is? Yeah. Like, are there basic places like it? I, and I, not necessarily this place, but like, is there a target or something where like yeah. I can get like just basic, you know, like I don't, I don't have to get everything shipped to me from. Yeah. You know, yeah. Is there like a decent hospital nearby? Like, right. That might be yes. Nice, a decent so. hospital. Like how far am I from like legitimate modern society? Yeah. Uh, see, yeah. see, in my, in my thing, I would, I would just want to die. I think, cause I, <laughs> I think this is, this isn't like, an ideal way to live my life this is no like same if, same here with yeah this is like if that. everything blows up like i would i would have like a do not resuscitate like you know this this is the if i fully gave into existentialism yeah you know and 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 it's just like i'm just gonna i'm just gonna be here long enough you know for that wolverine to to nick an artery or something that's it's all you know, so like, basically, you're going to be like Siegfried and Roy. Basically, <laughs> you're going to get a leotard and start doing yeah. magic. Oh my! No, gosh. I mean, I the the few times where I have toyed with this, um, I end up I end up 
feeling like I have these huge epiphanies. Mm -hmm. And then I get back into society and I, I look at my notes and I'm like, oh, that's just really pedestrian stuff. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so like, I, I like the, the feeling of those epiphanies, but then you come back to it and you're like, oh yeah, this is just really mundane thinking. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard to like, I, I, I guess that might be more of the direction is like the, the whole Salinger esque thing was like, it, it's like a wild fantasy, but it's also like a potential reality with my personality type. Right. Um, and, and it's one I'm aware of where it's like, if I had the means to do so, I might end up there. I kind of think I'm kind of with Gary in the sense of like, I like the idea of, I think I'm too old to think that I don't like civilization. Like I like being near things. I like, like, yeah. I like, like being able to pretend that I'm like starting a fire without having like, you know, in a fireplace without having to like cut the wood. You know, but like I but, enjoy like the, the luxuries of like to me, maybe cooking food, but I didn't have to like go hunt the food, you know, like, I can't, me, I, can't like, be, still, I, I can't be the only one that gets really sick of commercialism and material things. Right. Oh, no. no. Oh, 100, no, absolutely. No, not. I, I, yeah. I think we've all had a Thoreau fantasy, dude. I mean, I, I even or had the a one, period was where that kid, the kid who ran off and was sort of just drifting all over the country and ended up dying in a bus in Alaska. Who was that guy? What, I... the one who killed his girlfriend? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. No. I was like, there's that one recently, but I don't think that was Alaska. No, this was, it, they made a movie about it. Um, Crazy. So he was just off drifting in Alaska? He went all over. Let me you know, wait. do you think it was because he was like traveling on the bridge? <laughs> Sorry. Let me find it. Hold on. That was an Alaska dig. <laughs> That was a good one too. Sorry. Chris McCandless. You guys, did you see that movie? Uh, no. The Call no. of the Wild. I mean, I The Call of the Wild sounds familiar. Yeah, oh, he, The Call of the Wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, I forgot the name of the actor who starred in it. Uh, Call of the sorry. Wild. I, I always get that confused with Hatchet for right. some reason. Oh, Into the Wild was the movie. Like, Call of the Wild was the doc documentary about it. Into okay. the Wild was the movie starring Emile Hirsch. And and sung by Eddie Vedder. Yes. Yeah. Uh, basically, yeah, this kid, he got disillusioned. He decided he was going to burn all his money and go off and just, like, hop trains and live with nomads all over the country and do this whole thing. And it was mm -hmm. very, you know, it was this whole movie about it. And it was very romantic and appealing and ultimately he found himself in alaska and everything went wrong like he had a bunch of lucky breaks the whole time and then he shot like a deer or an elk or something but he didn't know how to smoke it so it all went bad and he didn't know what to eat and it was getting cold and i think he ate the wrong thing like he thought he had a little botany book and he thought this was a safe thing to eat, but it wasn't. It got him violently ill and he ended up just yep. dehydrating and dying out in the, the woods. But that's one short of, the of that sad ending. It was very romantic. But again, it's I think it's something like when you're 25, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah like I can do that. But now when I'm 47, <laughs> you know, it's like I'm not doing that. I'm not, yeah. So to me, like the dream is this, it's like a small college town that has a cool kind of liberal kind of hippie slant and has like a university and a library and basic modern, you know, like paved roads, but not like a big city. I've never, my whole life, I've never had any interest in living in like a big city. I've never even had an interest in like traveling to a big city. Like I like New York or anything like that. I just it sounds like torture. But. As a kid, I loved the idea of cities, and then I lived in some big cities and realized very quickly, like as they I got suck. older, like I, I just <laughs> here's the thing. Like uh, we we did that meetup, you know, Corey, that you were at and stuff. It's like yeah. I so I couldn't. I don't think I'm kind of glad I don't live in that area, even though it was a cool area to be. And it's like again, you have that weird moment where you're like. 
you know, we're at lunch and there's a legendary animator who just overhears us like that. There's weird stuff that's like only going to happen in like Burbank or L.A. or Pasadena. Yeah, and right. it's like I, I like that, but I like it as a tourist. Like I don't like having to like drive for 10 hours to like park somewhere to eat. I just as corny as it is, it's like such an awesome thing to be able to just like go get groceries and park. Like, okay, Didi, you know, Didi says, uh, Idaho. It sounds like Corey's world, Gary. That's, that's what true. you're just, Gary, what you're describing. I live in a college, I, I live in a college town where like the people that don't work in the college are very much here because they don't really want to be like in the hustle and bustle of stuff. So you would say right. it's like a, a bastion of like liberal area, that part that Gary I, mentioned. I, 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 the part, the part about liberal hippies and stuff that, that is so unappealing to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, not, not because of the liberal, but because of, I don't want to know people's politics. I just, yeah. You know what I mean? I, like, I, don't, I, mean, I guess I shouldn't say when I say liberal, I mean more so. I was kidding around too. Yeah. Um, no, I, no, I, I, I will tell you, having lived in Portland um, and being a bleeding heart uh, liberal, like politically, I still like I I am thankful to not live in Portland anymore. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I I that's a good, a it's a legitimate point. I think I mean more in terms of like open minded yeah. and socially liberal. Like I, the politics, yeah. I don't care, but like I. Yeah, like you don't want you you don't want a bunch of uh, people living in a compound driving out the others. So here's a thought: right. What about what about this? Or you know, like Waco. I don't want to live next door yeah. to Waco. Okay, yeah, like, guys. So so don't about live this? In, don't live in northern here. Idaho. No, no, no. Northern here's, Idaho, you want to avoid. <laughs> here's what we do, guys. Okay, so like we get some property up in uh, you know Oregon, right? We just find like a small town, you know, like that's, you know, like got a very small population. We start gradually moving our art friends in there, right? We start buying up all the property. Then we just start wearing maroon, you know? Um, and I, I mean, I'm just saying like in this theoretical framework, like, you know, I could be like the guru there in this city, just theoretically. I'm just throwing it out hypothetically. Um, so basically, I just want to uh, do the Rajneeshi business uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. from that Netflix documentary. That's basically. Oh, what do you guys think? Well, it's. Oh my gosh, you haven't seen that documentary, Corey? You yeah. have to. You I, have to. There are it's... so few documentaries that I. No, no, I no. Have the patience for. This is one of those ones. Like, it's. Oh, uh, right. I, some, I mean, Gary. Like... What, how would you describe that documentary? I, I, I'm just familiar with it. I didn't watch the documentary. Oh, my gosh. You have to oh, watch oh, it. Oh, Keith Harper. Have you guys seen Billy Jack? Billy Jack? <laughs> yes. Yes. Billy Billy Jack is where it's at. But in, in that scenario, I would also just happen to be a martial arts expert. That's there we go. like That's the only way that one works for me. I yeah. need to know what Billy but, Jack is. I don't know. Billy Jack is. I'm going to put the left stuff. side of my foot across the right side of That's your face. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that was shot in Prescott, Arizona, by the way. So <laughs> uh, Billy Jack. I haven't heard or thought of that movie. Neither have I. That's a pretty random out of nowhere. 20 years. Yeah. That's hilarious. I, I oh, need to know about this movie. So is it a bad, like, B movie? Yeah, kind of. Uh, it's a, it's it's like a series a, of movies. It's this. Uh, isn't it's, he supposed it's, to be like half Native American or something? Or I, I think it's every every like beatnik hippies wet dream of what society should be like. It, he yeah. is. I think he's part everything, but he's like a white part guy. Yeah. yeah, white guy that has lived with the Native Americans, and he knows like all types of martial arts. So he's got he's got like the Asian and the Native American and the and the uh, you know the whole like whatever anyway. But he lives off the land and he's just he's just a peaceful guy that wants to live a peaceful life. But there's yeah. always like a biker gang that picks a fight with them. Or oh something. yeah, or, of course, logic. Or he, he happens happens to be a badass martial artist. Yeah, he happens. happens to be the guy who happens to be around like every damsel in distress being hassled by some drunk guy at a bar or whatever yeah. i remember so little about it other than 
he's like really tall and kind of gangly <laughs> and he has like it's it's like a what's that show dr quinn medicine woman uh-huh. he's like a he's like a, a fringe character on the sidelines of that show like they, he would never have his own episode but you would like see him at the at the market no i get know? what you're saying yeah like um <laughs> like there's that uh that other thing with like the canadian guardsman guy it sounds a bit like that too oh i don't know oh my gosh i'm gonna blank out oh well whatever um yeah. yes anyway. that sounds that was pretty it, awesome I, by I the way can't... I can't say that it's worth watching because I literally haven't seen it since I was like nine or something. I can't decide sounds either. Worth, I sounds mean, worth it's watching to me. Fun. I think we need a marathon. Like, it, it's not, it's it's not bad. I don't know if I would no. say it's good. It sounds well. I mean, bad it's, good it's though. Like anything shot in the seventies. Yeah, it's all not bad, but not yeah, I think it, it it would be a fun movie to have on while you were drawing. Because I think oh, that's as closely as you would need or want to watch it, you know? It's... Oh, dude. Yeah, I forgot what this guy looked like. So I feel like, Corey, I feel like your description almost sounds like, I don't know, Gary, did you ever have the beatnik phase where you're just like, you know, going to do the Kerouac thing or? A little bit. Yeah, I definitely I, no, I was that. more like the, the like coffee house beatnik phase. Oh, okay. Bit, yeah. Like okay, I, I'm, I can admit now because I'm so far past it, but I definitely went through that phase in like my teens and early twenties where you would bring your, your art tablets and your, your portfolio to the coffee shop and set up at a table and conspicuously draw. So, you know, people would come up and ask you about it. Yeah. That, that kind of thing. I love this so much. Yeah, there he is, Billy Jack. Yeah, he's got the beaded thing on his weird yeah. ten gallon hat. Yeah, and he's like you know a friend of all the Falcons and yeah. like covered wagons. Yeah, like oh a, that's a great poster. Look and at then that. Every single every single person in this shot has a gas mask on. So it's like the most contrary. Like anyway, that's hilarious. So Corey, that's your that's your comic project right there. You need something equivalent <laughs> to Billy Jack. Where you something like that. Maybe you need to just do like a cheesy action oh, comic where th- you just come up with a premise for just some action sequences, you know? Yeah. I, I was honestly thinking, um, I just might, uh, not do anything and see what that's like. That sounds amazing. Wow. There you go. <laughs> like just do just just work your creative day job. Oh my goodness. I know. Like I I kind of I kind of it's gonna be a rough semester because when you take a sabbatical, like the other two semesters of the year are you're loaded heavier. And I I almost want to be like, what would it be like to get home and then when the kids are in bed, like sit down and read a book and then go to sleep. Oh my gosh. Or like watch television. I, if I think if I watch television or, or if it was like a form of like electronic entertainment, I think I would go crazy real fast. But I wonder though, do you think you'd just like the next art casters? You'd just be like, do you guys catch the game? And we'll be like, what? Oh yeah. I get into into sports all of a sudden. Right. (laughs) I'll tell you, I'll tell you another. Like Bob's like, uh, game the other night like he just uh he needs to work on his back game in hey, hand because here's, this here's is my another, sports talk you guys I'm here's, really here's another dream sports. here's another dream that i i still to this day haven't ruled out you know those shipping containers just just the big like they're 10 by 20 or 10 by 40 uh-huh yeah oh you're gonna um, make a tiny house right no but i want to bury it in my backyard like i want, oh like a hobbit house uh-huh i want a i want a secret layer like it just i just want to bury like and and run like electrical and water maybe not water because i don't want to worry about so like an old stuff. like you're more talking like a 1950s like fallout <laughs> shelter i want a <laughs> fallout shelter but like a like an artist cave i don't want to call it a man cave because those are dumb but like just like I just want to be able to, like right now, 
I'm sharing walls with the rest of my family. So if I wanted to like at two or three in the morning, just like, I want to listen to this album really loud. I couldn't, right? Unless I have headphones on. That's but if true. I'm if I'm like 20 feet away from my house and 10 feet underground, I could crank that so loud and just go deaf early and just, you know what I mean? Like, and I, I just have a little tunnel where I this can just This is reminding me of that... Um... We just watched this like uh, on New Year's, like the um, the Twilight Zone. There's a classic Twilight Zone episode where like there's a big threat of like the whole world's going to be destroyed by like a nuclear bomb or something. Is this the one and with the glasses? No, that's one that although that is easily like probably the best if or if not in the top like two Twilight Zones. Now this one's weirder. It's like everybody's having like a social gathering dinner and being kind of nice. And then they all kind of part ways. And then like the warning goes off. So everybody had like, it follows this family that just had a bunch of friends over for dinner. Everybody was nice to like, everyone's trying to get in his fallout shelter uh-huh. and like, they're all clinging to get in it and like just punching people. And it's like this crazy thing. And he won't let his friends in. Cause if he lets one in, like, it's going to be, and then it's just announced like at the end, like, oh, uh, sorry, b- bad call. Everybody's going to live. And so they <laughs> like, they all look around at like each other. Like they've destroyed this guy's house. Like everyone's just like punched each other and like fought for like survival. And just like, no one can look at each other the same again. That's what's going to happen. If you build a fallout shelter, Corey, I'm just exactly you, that. except, except you're going to have neighbors build... just clawing to get in there and no, I never be able to this... look at your neighbors the same way. I will build this in Idaho and I can guarantee that I am not even going to have the best one in town. Yeah. That's like, a good already, point. already right now. And I don't know where they are. Like, I'm sure that I'm sure that there are people with bug out bags and like a full like plan, you know, like they practice it like fire drills in school <laughs> their 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 kids are like grabbing their bug out bags uh you know and jumping in the truck and they speed away and they time themselves i'm sure that there are many families like that in my town yeah. <laughs> and it's just routine and you would have no idea oh man i don't know uh, that's okay i'm sure there's some of that here it's just we don't have like basements or anything nothing nothing goes underground in california <laughs> why is that is it the water table uh it's because of uh earthquakes man like yeah that's but why it, the, from what i understand at least in our area because we're like right next to san andreas so yeah there's like some building code stuff but i also think it it does have something to do with just the era the houses were built and then i do think it's probably the ground maybe the ground's less fertile maybe it's the water i don't know i know but yeah there's just I, no basements i mean there's rarely basements in california right right well Speaking, i remember my my aunt oh. bought a house across the street from us and she was from utah and so when they built their house they built a basement and everyone was like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, it was so weird. And she's so like, weird. every house has a basement. And they're like, no houses have basements. What are you? I think she might be the only the only house in, in Paso Robles, California that has a basement. I don't think I, here in Arizona, I don't think I ever saw a basement until I was in like my mid-30s. I feel yeah. like Arizona, you would like, because ba- the cool thing about basements is in the summer, they're much right. cooler and in the It'd winter nice. they're much warmer. So right, you would like think. It, but yeah. yeah. I think base, why... basements are, are similar to like air conditioning by the beach. Like it would make sense to have air conditioning units in cities by the beach, but they just don't. They just don't. <laughs> and and in the desert, they don't. Uh, it might make sense to have like basements, but we just, yeah, we don't. just don't. We're desert folk. Well, I'm... I'm happy to say i have finished my latest page me too Stem, 1979 i love it and i'm gonna go to bed because it is 1 in the morning yeah i'm gonna make it a call as well because uh because i wrapped uh i wrapped a page pretty happy with it and uh i'm not gonna have time to flat all the colors tonight so i'm gonna call it on the yeah, black i lines. drew i drew my smear frames so i'm done i love the smear frames man yeah. i think that's pretty amazing yeah it's very cool 
I've also, I appreciate you guys uh, coming on and hanging out and I've learned some new things today and I will encourage you guys. Oh my gosh. Now I have to, I'll, I'll find the name of that documentary on Netflix, but you should watch it. It, it is. Find it. And then you've got to watch Billy Jack and repeat and uh, report back to Keith. Yeah. Yeah. I like that idea. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, Billy Jack's going to have to happen too. Wow. Keith is like passionate about this. I like it. Um, <laughs> Dee, Dee said uh, was nice. Uh, yeah, thank you, Dee, Dee. Nice chatting. Thank we you, Brianna. It. Jake, everybody. Jake, all you guys. Keith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, with that being said, if there is like a any sort of scenario where people, your neighbors are trying to get in your fallout shelter, just remember like if it's a false alarm, this is going to be an awkward experience. Oh, Dee, Dee thank you for money. I appreciate wow. that. <laughs> all right. With a super chat saying uh, for that. coffee in the morning. Hey, we'll you know, money is good. I appreciate that. Now I will buy coffee that, with that. Now I'm regretting not doing the stream on my channel. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You can have coffee in the morning. Look at you That's now. Well, uh, you know, this is something for Gary to look forward to when he yeah, starts his I guess chat. I'm going to I'm gonna have to try and... Uh, Hells yeah. Get that. Get some of those free coffees. Oh. Yeah. I appreciate it. Um, all right. With that being said, uh, we'll, I'll see you guys on the next stream. And uh, I appreciate all of you. And I'm just going to talk about appreciation. Oh, wait. Crap. We have to do plugs. Gary, where can everybody find oh, your work? Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, Dinosaurs vs. Mars Bots on Instagram or just Gary Hodges on YouTube. And I will be doing my first live stream on my channel uh, Saturday, 11 a.m. Arizona oh, yeah. time. So wherever you are, type it into the old interwebs and see what the conversion is. But it, it, I think it's the same now as Pacific Standard Time, 11 a.m. Saturday. Be there. Awesome. Be there. Be square. All right. Have a good night, Gary. Um, A-U-D-G-E-S. Brianna. I love it. Corey, where can everybody find your stuff? Uh, you can find my stuff at CoreyKerr.com. So C-O-R-Y-K-E-R-R.com. I love it. And then uh, if you guys haven't yet, uh, make sure you pick up two stories, my graphic novel about faith and mental illness. You can buy this on Amazon at a reduced rate or just order from your local uh, comic book shop. And uh, also uh, pre-order Jacob's Apartment or go better yet, go to your local uh, bookstore or comic store and request that they carry it. And uh, also make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell and all that fun stuff so you get notifications where we're about to go live. And also... Make sure you're following these guys, Gary, Corey, all of us, because uh, we're going to all be live streaming a lot and creating our own little overlap of live streaming communities. So you want to make sure you're following everybody so you get notifications where we're about to go live. And that'll do it. And goodbye.